what it is about games growing up, but when you're a kid, it's the most immersive thing in the world. You're playing a game that you don't even imagine doing it in real life, you know, you can live it through that. And with games like MotoGP3, this is the games that I loved growing up. Something that when you go back to it, it still feels the same. And that's what we're going to do today, so I hope you enjoy. So I think we're gonna be Valentino Rossi. So from what I'm aware, we do have the original save on here, but we do need to unlock him again because sometimes the game, I think, corrupts the file. So let's see. Yeah, so challenge 12, beat Valentino Rossi. That's the one we want. Let's go. Let's uh, see what we can do. Let's see if we've still got it. I, I think we will. You never lose it with these games. Here we go, around Bruno. So, a track that they still actually race around in the real life calendar. Rossi's on that all conquering Repsol Honda. If you don't actually know, this was the first year of the prototype MotoGP era. And the Honda was by far the most competitive bike to be on, and Rossi was simply dominant. Oh my god, we're running so wide. And then we've got the lead. I don't know if I've mentioned it already, but in the the games that I'm, you're seeing now, the riders weren't all unlocked, so you actually had to do challenges to unlock them. And I just remember sitting up, maybe when I shouldn't have been when I was younger, just trying to unlock every single rider for the next day. And it was always so much fun. You could never lose sort of interest in this. It was great. Doing well so far. Oh. Yeah, I think we've beat him, so we'll have. I can still hear him, though. He's still there. Oh, no, he's still there. And funny enough, in, th in this game, you couldn't actually look behind, so you just had to go off the, the sound, and if they actually passed you, that was it. Here we go, into the last two corners. He's still there. <laughs> and there, here it is. And there's the line. Challenge done. Good stuff. There we go. Valentino Rossi. Has been unlocked. A funny, well, a little fact that it's the most boring fact ever, but... Born two days before Rossi when I was younger, I think that was kind of cool. I know. So here we go. Oh, Rossi's unlocked. We'll go back to the, the menu, arcade. Let's pick the track. We'll go for. 
We'll go for Suzuka. So Paul Ricard, Donington, Estoril, and Suzuka are the four tracks that aren't actually on the calendar now. And it's a shame because Suzuka is one of the best. Look at this here, all the old games. All the old bikes, sorry. You understand, see the Repsol Honda, it was like the benchmark to be on. I used to love being the, let's see, where's the Red Bull Yamaha, oh, Red Bull Yamaha, that was the bike. Jurgen van der Gerberg's bike as well, and the old Aprilia. But we're going to be Rossi, there's the bike there. Yellow 46, Repsol Honda colours, pretty much unstoppable, 2002-2003. We'll do two laps, don't want to make it too long. Transmission settings, yes. It's actually not too bad for a game that was out in 2003, 2002, yeah, 2003. Um, it's got a little bit of customization, so it doesn't make a difference when you're younger, you never really thought about that, you know. But here's the race now, we're about to start it. The old grids, Gary McCoy, Regis Lacone, Perry Reba, who's Johnny Ray's crew chief. Here we go. Not a bad start, eh? There they are, the two Red Bull WCM Yamahas. And if you haven't seen it, the uh, film done by Mark Neal about the 2002 season, faster, give it a watch, it's great. We're not doing too bad, we're in the 13th. Still got a wee bit to catch the leaders. And Kenny Roberts. What an iconic circuit Suzuki is though. Um, like I said, unfortunately, don't race for it anymore. Um, it was really due to safety reasons. Um, because unfortunately, uh, Daijiro Kato, the person I'd done the, the last challenge with there, um, uh, he, lost his, he lost his life. Uh, around here in 2003 so it's a shame the only uh, categories that would race around here now would be Japanese Super Sport and Super Bike and uh, the Suzuka 8 hour race and the Endurance Racing so it's a shame that MotoGP don't get the race around here because it's a, a magnificent circuit but I would love to go one day to either F1 around here or uh, Suzuka, Suzuka 8 hour that would be a dream of mine to do but we're not doing too bad, we're in 7th place. Coming down to the famous chicane where Senna and Prost had their coming together in 89 as we slightly cut that. I must say that's not a bad first lap. Let's see if we can do it, let's go. Oh, I think I've got him. And now we'll have to hunt down Mr. Mr. Rossi, who is doing his usual disappearing act, like he would have done in 2002.
I probably have a real horrible look on my face because I'm concentrating because it is fun but it's, it's not as easy as it looks. No, I will not send. Oh, that was close. Come on. Oh, right around the inside. There we go. And now let's try and break away. Come into spoon curve here. Use all the apex. Use all. There we go. There's the, the apex we wanted. And now you can just send it. Fantastic game by Namco. Nothing's nothing's wrong with this game. It's perfect. The soundtrack, the the speed, the look of the game. It just feels great. It captures what MotoGP is for me. I know that might just be nostalgia, but I really do think it has everything. And into the the chicane. Rossi's there. Oh god. Oh, there he is. Just about one that eh? <laughs> Here's the final results. Yeah, beat Rossi. So uh, I look at the screen and I see all the the TV graphics. It I just get that sort of burst of nostalgia. It's good times for being a kid, you know, playing the games. Because when when I was younger, the TV graphics were actually put into the game. So the one you see on screen now is the one you see on TV after a race. And I had to think that was so cool that you were able to put that in a game. And you're basically like a writer. I, yeah, I know it's super weird. But that's what it's all about when you're a kid. You want to feel like you're one of your heroes. And this game was just gave you that little bit of uh, sort of feeling of what it actually was like. But yeah, guys, that, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I certainly have. I want to do more videos like this. I think it's kind of... It's good to revisit things that you know bring us back to good memories. and Especially during times like this where it's, it's very uncertain and it's tough for everybody. But I just want to make everyone, uh, for a couple of minutes at least, just, just have a good time and think back at the good times and look forward. Just don't worry, all this will blow over and... You won't have to sit and watch me rant or look at a, a screen playing a game like a like a toddler, you know. But I appreciate the support and thank you again for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, um, comment on what you'd like to see me do in the next video, play some more games. Um, yeah, but until next time, uh, see you later.